everybody for coming. Some people were at the last meeting, which is also awesome. And thank you for coming again. Um, so I think that we're all here probably for the same reason, hopefully, um, because we love Kate's Corner and our store, which has been for sale for two years. We're all wondering about what's going to happen. Um, but I actually think it's, it's kind of a bigger issue about communities in Vermont right now and um, how they support us and how we create them and sustain them. And um, I do think in Vermont we're lucky enough to have really strong communities, it's not like where I grew up in Maryland, so it was very different. Um, and I love that about Vermont. And I think that those strong communities are what help us survive um, in beautiful rural areas like Maple Corner through our long winters. <laughs> um, I think they're really important. And I also think that at the, the heart of these strong communities in Vermont is mom and pop general stores. And um, those, those general stores create situations for things that I see every day as the manager of the, of the store, a place for people to come together. And I mean, that in so many different ways, but that's really what is happening. Moments of coming together, creating relationships, sustaining relationships, um, which you can't just be mom. What? Right the You're not supposed to talk while I'm talking. <laughs> the mom, 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 Changing that a little bit, um, I, I know everybody in here knows that um, these sweet little general stores that we love in Vermont are kind of dying out. Tons of them have died out around us. Um, the East Calais store is having problems. Woodbury closed. North Montpelier closed years ago. And those are all apartments now, which would be a very different thing if, if this turned into apartments. It'd be a different thing for our, our um, property values, our community health and attracting new residents, um, along with just sustaining our, our relationships. So Chris and JB and I were sitting around one day talking about how the, this mom and pop um, general store model is not sustainable anymore because people have to put in you know, 80, 90 hour weeks. It, it has to be their life. And nobody wants to do that anymore. And I'm, they shouldn't have to. And um, so we kind of came up with this idea of not requiring two people that are going to work the rest of their lives to, you know, have, oh my gosh, that's my phone, sorry. Um, so that we can go buy beer whenever we want to or go say hi to our neighbors or whatever. So we started talking about that about a year ago. And... Um, that all kind of led to where we are now. We started meeting with other people and it kind of grew and um, now we've formed a corporation and we're the founding board of the Maple Corner Community Store and we've kind of devised a way for the community to buy the store and secure its future for everybody and for everybody to have a say in what happens to it and what how it um, provides for the community. So tonight, you're going to hear um, just from a few people. It's going to actually be really short and quick. Um, and we are going to ask you for money because it's a fundraiser and that's what we need to do. Um, but we also, you know, at the core of this is really community and how we create that. Um, so tonight you're going to hear um, from one community member. Olivia, where did she go? Olivia, thank you. <laughs> and um, then there's going to be a short interactive conversation with you guys where we'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, and then you're going to hear from a board member, another board member. The closer. The closer. <laughs> and then we're going to open it up for questions. And I'm just going to ask that you pose your questions until that end time, and we will definitely answer all your questions. But just for the flow of the efficiency. Are we going to have an update from the financial expert? 
From Rob? Yeah. You certainly can. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rob has spreadsheets. It's an important part of this. It is. It's a super important part. You're locked and loaded, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's it. So, Olivia, one over here. Woo! Yeah. 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 Somehow I've become the official old timer. <laughs> necessarily our own, but we, like now, we lived in each other's houses a lot, but um, it was always, for me, uh, a mark in the day when my mother came home from work, and I lived where Rob lives now, and Anne-Marie with their kids up the road, and uh, at that time, there weren't any trees between the house and the store, so it was a straight shot, it was a nice little windy path that went down to the store, and I used to wait up there for my mother to come home. It's because I could see out my kitchen window. I could see her drive up in her, uh, she had a Citroen at one time, and a, like a lot of strange cars. But anyway, they usually made it home. And uh, so I would see her come home and I would run down to the store and probably beg for candy, something like that. But it's, it's a very vivid uh, memory for me of keeping watch and, and thinking about what it means, the store, we live not only our private lives, but this kind of public life, where our personal lives merge with the public. And so, um, and the store has always been there, just like for all of us, the store has always been there. And so, I just, um, I can't imagine what it would be like without the store. So, uh, and there were many other things that happened in the store uh, that were part of our public lives, part of the school life, um, and part of interaction as, as it is now. And um, something that's happened more recently, uh, I was kayaking on the pond, and Don says to me, there's a, there's a Curtis Pond Association gathering tonight at the Whaley Bar, and why don't you come? We're just going to hang out. There's no meeting. <laughs> sure. So I went, and... Uh, it was a Thursday night before open mic, and uh, we were sitting around and talking, and Gus Wheelock was there, and I've known Gus since he was born. And so we talked, and I haven't seen him for a while. That was wonderful. And, um, and then it was almost Bev's birthday, and Dawn got up and sang her a song, this very sweet song from the heart. And of course, we were all in tears. And uh, so there is just more heart, you know? and. Yes, the store offers us a lot of conveniences, milk, mail, all those things are really important, but I feel very strongly that it's the heart that really makes the difference for us as a village. And then when I was getting to leave, getting ready to leave, um, Hallie came up to me and she said, oh, Gus, Gus paid for your tab. I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's this child of my, you know, um, so, uh, who's now able to pay for my tab, <laughs> and, but thinks of it, you know? So there's connections between generations, you know, and also, you know, being party to um, uh, Bev and Don's um, interactions. Again, here's this personal life lived in a public sphere. And I think one of the most important things that we do for each other is to witness each other's lives. And here we get to do that in a very um, easy way. So that's my pitch for the heart. My pitch for the money is I figured out how many days I've been alive. And um, 
which is, by the way, 25,481, give or take eight years. <laughs> and I am in an enviable, enviable position in terms of money in that um, a number of people, Meg included, just gave me a, a year and a half ago a bunch of money for my land so that they can build their houses over there. So I have a bit of a windfall, and I believe in tithing to the community that has given me so much, and so I'm anteing up $20,000. And uh, so that comes to about 78 cents a day. <laughs> Which is really a bargain. <laughs> and I, value, and I intend to live a few more years you know, bringing it down to, uh, you know, maybe 77 cents a day, you know, over time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it helped me to think about it in that way. But, and why am I doing that now? Of course, uh, you know, I'm in retirement. I can use that money for other things. But to me, uh, it's not Maple Corner without the store. It's not Maple Corner without the community center. It's not Maple Corner without all of you, and being able to see you. I both, you know, I lived when I lived uh, here. I lived uh, by myself much of the time, and as a single person. And it was important to be able to uh, run into people without having to schedule something, which um, was always a bit of a chore. So. Um, <laughs> And I feel as though it's also imperative, imperative upon us now to do this now. If, um, if we can't do this now, if we can't buy the store and make it a community store, then uh, it may become apartments the way the Woodbury store did, or um, you know, maybe Artie and Nancy struggle along for a while and then something else happens. But, uh, in terms of the, um, the value of the building, it's always going to escalate. So I think one of the important things about buying it now ourselves is to put a cap on what the building costs. Because, you know, the next people are not necessarily, even if they want to run a store, um, they're not necessarily going to be able to buy it. And if they buy it with a bank loan the way Artie and Nancy did, that you know, puts an extra burden, and I think the smart thing that the board is doing is to buy it outright and to start a business without debt. That's incredibly important. So, um, as I say, I'm, I'm lucky to have this money now to be able to invest in the community, and I really think of it as an investment in the community. Yes, it's in the store, in this business, but it's also in the future of the community, and so I encourage all of us to dig deep in this moment because it may not come again. I'm Sam Elizabeth. I moved to Maple Corner about a year ago and I'm also on the board. And one of the things that we wanted to hear from all of you tonight was what the store means to you. We got to hear a little bit from Anne Marie and from Olivia about what the store meant to them, but we really wanted to take a portion of this meeting tonight to have a conversation with you all to hear uh, how it's affected you, what it means in the day-to-day -day aspect of your life as well. I'll start. It's great. <clears throat> uh, how many people were here last night? Okay, mm -hmm. so I won't bore you with the same story. <clears throat> Friday but night, two nights ago. Two nights ago. Sorry, two nights ago. Oh, oh, oh no. last night. For the mop, mini mop. Yeah. Okay, yeah, other hands will go <laughs> Oh, sorry, my name is Meg Dawkins, and I've been in the community since 19, um, early 90s. My ex-husband, J.C. Myers, was up the road. Um, so, <clears throat> I remember him saying to me, so we lived on the end of Eagle Edge Road, um, and Jamie and family lived over here, and we came over here every day. So um, the Dean's house, right? Is that, do I have that right? Mm -hmm. Dean's across from the store. Um, that was just the megalopolis of uh, <laughs> the Myers uh, conglomeration of massive children, and 
Steve Gallagher used to like throw mattresses out in the driveway so that that, that was their trampoline. They would just, <laughs> and they thought it really was a trampoline. But anyway, my point being is that we had <clears throat> this amazing exposure to not only the pond, we could walk to the pond, we could walk to the store, and then we could walk to Sarah and Steve's house, and there's just this constant entertainment. If you got bored in any place, you just keep going. Um, and just yesterday, um, my husband, John Dawkins, we were just like, we've been house hopping, and he was just like, oh, like what are we gonna make for dinner? We don't have any meat. And I said, oh, we could go to the store, and we could get reliable, local meat um, of our choice. And that was so great. So yeah, we might spend 50 to a dollar cent, uh, a dollar more, I don't even keep track. But it was just so nice to just have that, we've been in transition and to just know that we could get quality food at the store. That was great. That's the story. Tell them about your housing thing. You want me to? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. All right. So some, uh, or most of you know, that across from the um, Curtis Pond Swimming Access, there's a new road that looks pretty in imposing at times. But Highly you know, engineered. Yeah. <laughs> but it had to be because of the state and the fire department requirements. But oh. anyway, um, Olivia... <clears throat> with much patience after five years, um, a dream that I had of creating a small community of, um, in a smart growth model, which is our town plan, which is clustered housing, sharing infrastructure, and having open spaces. So <clears throat> she had a field of 28.75 acres, and she gave me the time and breath and space to um, figure out how to do that. And it's happening now. So you'll see this big uh, road going in, which ends pretty abruptly. And there are six houses on three and a half acres. And the rest of the land will be developed in regenerative agriculture, which basically means trying to restore the soils that have been impacted by um, uh, current models of agriculture which require big machinery and liquid manure and things. So we're just going to try to transform that over time. So if you have any questions, thank you, Reed, for <laughs> uh, that's what's happening. It's, it's a big project. And um, it also impact, is impacted and um, is supporting the store's future because the store's septic is on our property. And that happened years ago in, an, in a means to support um, septic. So what happens in these meetings is also related to our community. And we are in full support of making the store happen. And yet there's restrictions that are out of our control between other easements. So we embrace this project. and. Hope we can do whatever we can to make it happen. Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk about our experience. We moved here six years ago. We came from the Boston area, um, outside of Boston, about a half an hour. Um, and I worked in, uh, for a long time on climate change. We started an organization down there and uh, went in front of the town meeting and worked really hard on the issues of how we deal with climate change. And what it came down to for me was that you have to have a community. Because when the shit hits the fan, which it's starting to do now, we're going to need each other. And so our big effort was to try and get the community to come together. Reed knows Concord, Massachusetts. <laughs> it's a very wealthy town. The people came there because they wanted to be separate from each other. They didn't really want you coming down their driveway. They didn't really want to see you. So it was impossible, really, except for a small group of people to try and get people to understand the need for a community. So decided to get the hell out of there. 
So Bob, we're moving up to Vermont. Whoa. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to find some place to go. And um, <clears throat> so we came up here for two months. We rented a house in Templeton in January and February. And then we were going to go to a couple other towns that we were interested in. In Well, we knew what we were up against, right? So if we didn't like it in the middle of winter. It was a cold one, too. <laughs> and it was a cold one. 2013. And uh, at the end of it, I said, we decided that, you know, well, we could see this seems like we met some nice people. It could be possible. We've been going into Montpelier and playing field. And I started working at the Clay Studio over in Middlesex. And so we looked at, we, I, there was a realtor, her name was uh, mentioned a couple times. And so I called her up and said, show us a couple places and you get to know us. And then maybe, you know, if we decide to move here, you'll have a sense of who we are and can tell us what, you know, is available. And so... She showed us two houses. One was in a snowstorm. The first it was the first day it was in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're up on Robinson Hill Road, and we drove up there, and we absolutely fell in love with the house. We had no idea about Maple Corner. We had no idea about the store, the whammy bar, the blue barn. The realtor said to us, "Oh, you'll love those people. They're really great. You'll fit right in." <laughs> <laughs> so foolishly, we you know, in a way, thinking back, it seems foolish. We just took what we had, everything we had, and dumped it in this house. And there we were. And if the center of town had been Montpelier, we would not have been anywhere near as connected. When we realized about this store, and we walked in that door, and after the third time we walked in there, people knew our names. We felt like we were part of this community. This whole community has embraced us in a way that I never expected and was exactly what I was looking for to, fight climate, to help me fight climate change or deal with climate change. Now, it's a kind of a weird thing to tie it in with, but I think it's a really important thing we have to understand is we're going to need each other, and if we don't know each other, and if we don't run into each other daily and get to know the kids and the grandparents and all of that, we're going to be at a real disadvantage. So, you just might want to think about that. Hedge your bets. We've invested in a nice chunk. We haven't been here for very long. It's not as big as some, but um, we think it's important. Um, another thing that I was that I had brought up, and I, I I'll just mention it, Jamie. Where are you? You're in here. Okay. Um, yeah, there you are. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned it to Jamie last night, and I was thinking about this whole thing, and um, and one of the other things I thought about was the possibility of if if people would be willing to buy a share for somebody in our community who can't afford to have a share. Now. It, when I went home, I thought about it. I thought, well, if they can't afford it, then maybe they can't also afford to buy at the store. So I'm not really sure how that works. But I just thought that might be another way for some people to do something for some other people in this town that don't have the, you know, the advantage or the ability to support the store. And then it's just another way we can just kick in a little bit more. So That makes me think, sorry, I just... That's, some done. people in the room might not understand that if you buy a share, you have a vote. So if you buy a share for somebody else, they would have a vote. So mm -hmm. that might be. But what you say if they don't go to the store, they. Well, right, yeah. but they still might have a vote to right. say I can't afford to shop mm -hmm. at the oh, store. So how mm -hmm. do we deal with that? Mm -hmm. Well, they might just get their beer there or some one little. I think we all shop at the store sometimes. I came here in 2001, and um, similarly, I, we were a new home buyer, the first buyer home we bought. We had no idea what Maple Corner was, and, and we were just trying to find a school district that our son, who was going into kindergarten, um, could, could get into, and, um, and that would be congenial to him. But then, and I made the mistake uh, of walking into the store on my way to work in town. <laughs> and I was in a hurry. I had a meeting. And, um, and I wasn't out of there for 15 minutes because people were, you know, I was just trying to check my mail. And people would not let me out of conversation. <laughs> you know? and, I, and I did that several times, made the mistake several times and was late to work each time. And, and then I finally realized if I don't have at least 10 minutes, I should not be going into the store. You know? and, um, and so I quickly realized that it was this community place. And, and it was a place where my son, getting off from the school bus you know, at, at five below zero, mm -hmm. could, could wait. And, and um, you know, I remember explaining to someone who said, you know, 
do you take credit here? And at the time, they didn't take credit cards. And I said, that this is where there's real credit. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, where you don't need a credit card. It's just your name. And, yeah. and, uh, and so um, about a year later, I was elected to, on the board of the Maple Corner Community Center. I was sort of drafted. I didn't realize I was going to be elected. And, okay. and then after I was elected, I was told that I was going to, that I had been elected to be vice president. <laughs> and I came, and what I came in with is, is I came in on, I said, my platform is this, that this community needs a tavern. And um, so, so my platform is to convert Maple Corner Community Center into a tavern, you know, and I, I, I meant it sort of as a joke and people were appalled, of course. But I, I really feel like, you know, it, like what happened before the Whammy Bar, there was, there was a place called Camp Comfort, which is where the swimming area is now. And Camp Comfort actually operated as a tavern all through the Prohibition. Um, and so we've, we had a tavern here. That, and I do think that taverns um, are great places for the community to meet. And it really improves the environment of the community to have a tavern. Because then neighbors, especially there's music, neighbors meet each other in a congenial environment. And then it's a, they're a lot, they're, they tend to be a lot more congenial when we get together for town meeting because we know each other, we don't want to insult each other. And, and, um, and it's a, just a great um, meeting place. So the store is the meeting place. I mean, it's, it's the place, you know, if I didn't have the store um, and I was making pancakes, I wouldn't have a place to go buy um, baking powder when I need it. I mean, it's like, without that, it just, this, we're kind of lost as a community without having a place to conveniently go and get stuff. Um, and, you know, I think that, that it's, it's totally essential, but, but I think if you look at, for instance, go online and look at Zillow.com, which is where pretty much everything that's for sale in this neighborhood, real estate-wise, is advertised. And within the first few lines, or line or so, of any real estate that's being advertised in this neighborhood, it'll mention the store. Uh, and the whammy bar and it'll and you know real estate agents aren't stupid they're doing that because that's increasing the value of the houses in this neighborhood so for us all as property owners that might be a good thing but if you think about it the reason it's increasing it is the reason we're all talking about is that having a store makes a community it makes the convenience and it increases the value of our living here. And that's why our houses are valued more because of the store. And our houses would all be valued less if the store was gone. So that's an equity that we would lose if we lost the store, is we lose tangible value in our houses, which is probably more than we're going to contribute to buying the store. So it's actually in our self-interest to be <laughs> contributing you know, for, as homeowners, it's in our interest to be contributing and not losing the store because we're, you know, if nothing else, we're protecting the value of our property. That I mean, the last thing I want to say is that that the store has given the first jobs to almost everyone's kids who's grown up in this neighborhood have had their first jobs working in the store, and there's a huge value to that too. You know that. There is no other place where you're going to really get a first job around here, and there are very few employ employers around here anymore. Um, so it's super important, and that's why um, Ulrika and I are contributing to this project. I think that's an excellent point. The value of the community, I mean, the value of the properties are kind of based on the value of the center of town. It has so much value in the center of town. I um, just want to say one thing. After Hasso's story about, because she didn't mention the Whammy Bar, and to me it's all about the Whammy Bar. I don't know how you guys do <laughs> Did you go to Camp Comfort? Were you a camp? I'm not a thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by the Whammy Bar? You go and you buy those, those Cheetos things. Yeah. I mean, after the, I mean, when we came here, when we were staying on Templeton in 2013, we, that was just when the Whammy Bar had opened in October. In fact, the birthday is coming up, isn't it? Um, and we saw this little ad for it, because I used to play open mics in, in Concord, but I was always so, like, it was never good, never good, because there were the kind of open mics where you'd go and nobody wanted to listen. They just wanted to do their turn. They're just waiting to get their turn. You know, and there's nobody listening. Whammy Bar people listen, but that's not the story. 
we decided, oh, let's, let's go do this open mic at Whammy Bar. I think it's going to be good. And we looked at the picture online. It was this like, overhead lights and the honky-tonk piano. It looked really dreary <laughs> in that picture. <laughs> We said, well, let's just go anyway. So we're driving. It was really, really foggy. Remember, this is just Templeton, just right there. So foggy, you couldn't kind of see, many, I couldn't see Reed, for instance. We got to the callous sign, and we thought, I don't know we should do this. And we turned around and went back home. We never <laughs> checked it out. So uh, if we had only just gone that extra two miles, we might have found out it really was creepy and weird and not, never come back, but we didn't know. So we bought in. And now, I'm glad it's there. I don't, again, I don't know how to do it without it, but it's changed my life a lot. Because it's like playing to your friends in the living room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, the more mistakes you make, the better they love you. The more they love you. That's the way the audience is, and they really listen. They really listen. So. That's it. Hi, I'm <clears throat> Robin Chase. Hi, Robin. Hi. Hi. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll stop being so formal. Uh, let's see, I moved here in 1980, and I've had the great privilege to steward the piece of land I'm on at the top of the hill since I was in my mid 20s. And I, I was remarking at a party. Um, the other night that I have only lived on one property in Vermont and I still live there and I think it has a lot to do with this community and in the early 80s my first marriage ended and I got to know Olivia better and she called me into being the first calcificational right player. There, right up there, there he is. Oh, oh, that and I was sort of new to town so I got to play the out of town shyster. <laughs> <laughs> Very slick. Oh, I was there. It's like I was. Uh, you were I was one up by Aaron Slick. Yeah, you were so so Meridue. Meridue. Yes. That was your daughter. <laughs> but anyway, that was when, yes. <laughs> and my daughter. <laughs> um, Howie K owned the store, I think, at that point, and it was still gas, and you go in there, and it was. I mean, it was lovely, and there would be like a quarter inch of dust in all the cans. <laughs> Some hadn't moved very much, but it was still a lovely place to be. And my two boys would come down and, you know, torture Howie and Kay over making deals and paying candy and stuff. And kind of reminded me of you talking about getting candy, and my mm -hmm. kids did that too. And, um, and it's grown along the community supported me to have a business here and raise my kids here. and. People who work at my shop come down to the store every day to get lunch and snacks or beer on the way home and, um, and even now go to the Wendy Bar, come back into town from other places. And many have lived here in the community and have been amazing workers Paige. with me. Paige, Brian, yeah. uh, Matthew used to live here, lives in East Palace now, um, and others. And so it's been, you know, just incredible kind of warm blanket community that um, is now, at, you know, not at a crossroads, it's healthy, it just needs support to this amazing community piece. So, um, I haven't officially signed in, but I am signing in for a couple of shares, so I encourage everybody else to. Thanks for sharing all the experiences that you had at the store, and that's a perfect transition. Chris will share a little bit more about what the model is and bit more about the logistics, and then we'd love to get some questions that you all have about how this might work. Okay, so I'm Chris. I live uh, right across the here. You all know who I am. And I prepared notes here, and I guess I really don't know the need of them. I don't want to take a waste time. I'll, I'll breeze through them, but we can cut to the chase. Half the people in this room have already pledged. The other half, give us all your money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you, I mean, all of our reasons. Let me tell you the, the you stuff. You all know but our financial you know, life. Yeah. Let's cut to the yeah, let's cut the video. Yes. Yes. I mean, really, we're did. already there. You did the picture. Um, we need four hundred fifty thousand dollars. We have basically three hundred thousand. We need one hundred fifty more. The problem is, as evidence in this room, there's been the problem since the very beginning. We're going to run out of people. So we've identified, you know, we looked around, 
in a five mile area and identified 150 people that used the store. And then we went out another 10 miles and we figured there might be 250 people. We've talked to 200 of them. We have 100 pledges altogether of $300,000. That's great. We've got to do the rest of it. That's, that's where it becomes really hard. So we've set the shares at $5 a share. We did that five. to get 500 <laughs> 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 That was a We set the shares as low as we could possibly work it out. Uh, with one share, you get one vote. You become an owner of the share forever. Shares after that are equity shares. So everybody gets a vote, whether it's one share or thousands of shares. Um, we've run out of people. We have, there might be 50 people left, and we have $150,000 to get. So you guys can do the math, what it needs to be on average. Um, people that can only buy one share, please do. You get one vote, you're part of it. We love you. We need that. For everybody that does one share, we need an equal amount of people to do seven or eight shares. Just, I hate giving the bad news, but this is the reality of it, and that's what we have to do. Um, let me go through these other things really quickly. Um, a lot of things we heard from people are, like people would say, so they come up and ask us, so what's the right amount you give? And we can't tell you what the right amount is, whatever it is for anybody else, but I like, I like Jim's comment. You know, what's the right amount? Well, it depends if you want to buy the store or not. What, what it, did you say? It depends whether you want to buy the store or not. Mm -hmm. Because this is a heavy lift for a little town, and we not, might not make it. And the other question we get from people is, so what happens if we get almost there, and we don't have the rest of the money, we're $100,000 short, what happens? Well, we fold our tent and go home. There's no angels that are going to come down and take care of it for us. We can't borrow money, because the way we set it up. So either we're going to make it or we're not, and it's going to depend on finding enough people and digging deep enough to do that. Um, um, you guys should look at what the rest of this say. I, um, I, I, I just want people to think of this, um, <clears throat> maybe uh, I'll relate the way I started thinking about it. I, at the beginning, I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna buy a share for me and for both of my adult children. And if I plan my summer out right, I'll have $1,500 in my checkbook in the fall, and I'll be able to do that, and it won't be easy, but I'll do it. And then I got to the point where I'm like, no, we're in trouble here. We need to raise a lot of money, and, and I'm struggling with how do I do more? And then we're hearing from people who are saying, well, we, we want to do this, but we just pay our taxes this year, or this time of year, and, and so did I. And it just occurred to me that if this becomes a measure of how much money people have on hand in their checkbook this month, we're dead in the water. This is not going to happen. So I'm just encouraging people to think of it really long term. Like Olivia, 70 cents a day, or whatever it ends up being. 78. 78. <laughs> We're going to live for a long time. So I started thinking like, okay, I might crawl around in this earth for 20, 30 more years, who knows. And what if I did a couple hundred dollars a year? And, and then I'm talking to people and they're saying, well, we can't do this, but you know, we have home equity, we could borrow some and, and plan it out over a longer period of time and people have savings, whatever that means. Um, and I thought, you know, I, I, I've got to just figure a way out here. So I took a deep breath, dipped into my home equity, and I bought 10 shares. And I, I can't tell anybody what else to do. I mean, everybody's got to do what they can do and what's right for them. If one share is right, that's right. But I just encourage people to think of this in as long a term as possible. And if you can find a way to stretch it out over a long term, you know, a few hundred dollars a year for the rest of my life. I plan to use the store for the rest of my life. So my thinking came around from what's the most I can do, the minimum I can do, to I, I gotta do this. So don't follow me, but do more than that, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I had more stuff, but uh, <laughs> you, got, you guys have all the reasons in the world why this has to happen. Yeah. And there's a good chance we're not going to be able to make it. So I guess the one other thing I want to say, okay, first thing you have to do is, and I hate when people tell you what you have to do, but this is what you have to do. <laughs> first thing you have to do is think what you can do yourself. Make that pledge. Second thing is feel really good about that. Then walk over to your neighbor's house with a couple of cold beers and sit down and say, hey, I just did this. I feel really good about it. And here's why I did it. And... 
invite them to come along. Then call your siblings, call your rich uncle, call your mother and your kids and everybody and have them join in too. And then walk around the street with a cardboard sign saying, we'll work for store or whatever. Do whatever. <laughs> Be an evangelist. Uh, go out and talk to all your neighbors and, and, and we've got to dig people out of the, we've been looking under rocks, trying to find more people and it's always been the problem we're going to run out of people in the end. We're near the end, we're running out of people. Please help us find that. And what is the end date? November 1st is our goal. If we have to go past that, it's uh, we may or may not be able to, but that's what we've worked out with our Ben Nancy. And we've been at this for a year and a half. And the reason we haven't been able to talk to people earlier is because we are selling actual shares and registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And if we talked about it before the 1st of August, it was, we would be like insider trading, we would have gotten in a lot of trouble. So we've had to kind of keep, we weren't allowed to talk to people about shares until just this summer. You haven't mentioned the uh, community center tax exempt donations. Well, I'm going to leave all that for the question and answer. Okay. The specifics of how that works. We'll open up the questions. And then okay. Rob's better at that. So I'll leave it for time. Really what about that? So maybe you can tell us that first. Well, there's, there's multiple ways to give. And um, the way this is set up is under a certain rule with the state of Vermont, which it, this is a uh, really a community-based corporation. Um, and corporations have all kinds of rules that are federally regulated. Um, and, but this is, you know, under the state of Vermont, community-based corporation such that you have to be a Vermont resident to invest in it. If you're an out-of-state person, and, and I encourage everybody to think of others and, um, and I know of some that I'm going to ask um, for money that live out of state. Um, they, they can donate. Uh, they can get a tax-deductible donation through the community center. So the community center has agreed to take on donations. And uh, in doing so, they then become an investor and an owner of the store, which just further ingrains the community aspect of the store. Um, so, so you can either donate and have a tax deductible donation to the community center, or you can be an owner and have equity in the store and, and a vote in um, how it's operated and who's, who's operating it. So um, that's the, there's all kinds of things to dive into in regards to the structure, but but that's one of the aspects of it. Um, and in terms of, of fundraising, just to, to jump on what Chris was saying, I, I think we're, we're getting towards the end. Um, this is you know, a relatively small group compared to what we had last time. And um, I think as we approach the end of October, we're gonna be contacting the 100 people that we've talked to so far and asking um, all of you and all of them, you know, what else can we do? Um, who else can we talk to? Um, and so that's part of our job as a board is to kind of formulate the game plan to get us to the finish line and, and we'll be engaging you in that pretty soon here. Do we just write a check out? How do we do it? How do if we you'd do like it? To, that work? Well, we have a uh, uh, binders in the back. Mm -hmm. Every investor gets a, a binder Ooh. that with a business plan in it, and uh, uh, like that. yeah, mm -hmm. that right there. And and uh, essentially, make sure you look it over and know what you're getting into, and and then sign on to buy some shares. But I think the key thing and, that I understand is that if you invest and it doesn't whatever, if you don't reach your goal. Right. It's an escrow, yeah. So every check we get goes into an escrow account, and it sits there and just waits around until we close. Um, and by law, based on what we put into that binder, we cannot close on the store until we've at least raised three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, which was the purchase price we agreed upon. We're trying to raise four hundred and fifty so that we can deal with the septic, so we can buy inventory, so we can have 
uh, a little bit of uh, operating funds um, going into the slow months in the winter. Um, so, um, but we, if we do not get at least to 375, we have to either give you your money back or come up with some kind of plan B in which you might agree to let us keep it. And we would, it would, we'd have to renegotiate a whole new thing. Uh, we're hoping that doesn't have to happen. Just, uh, I'm Rod Buck, and I'm a financial investment guy, and uh, we've lived here, Sandy and I, since 76, and I think we're on the Olivia plan for contributions, and um, uh, I'm wondering, you know, Chris was saying if we don't get to the 450, you know, that's it, can't do it. Are there other alternatives that you board members are thinking? I mean, very few deals are done for pure equity these days. Are there ways that we could do, I mean, we should get as much equity as we can, without doubt, that makes all kinds of sense. But you might be able to do a bridge loan that would allow you to get the other 75,000, whatever you're lacking, and then you could work on paying that off over, to, over time with grants, other kinds of fundraising, it would give you more time, it would allow you to execute the transaction and get, you know, 85% of what you want instead of saying, oh, we can't do it, we did. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think if, if we don't get to our goal, then... Um, You'll think about other things. <laughs> and it, 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 we have thought about those things, and okay. I, we should pick your brain about those things. Um, but, you know, I think there's a certain amount of, of urgency about trying to get to the goal because wouldn't that make life easier? And we do have sure. in, uh, significant lead investors such as yourself that have actually made their investments contingent on not having a loan. Because if you look at the business plan, I mean, it, the one great thing about the store is it has been making money. It's not a failing store like some of the others in Vermont. Um, Artie and Nancy have been doing okay. They're not getting out of it because they're, they're losing money. Um, they are, are just want to move on. Um, but they, the economics are nonetheless challenging if we have to service a, a significant debt. Well, if you had to do it, the idea would be as little as possible and as short a time as possible. Right. right? And it might provide the basis for really rallying around all sorts of stuff, pay the blood and pay off. We have, we have had people that have pledged to Susan Vermont and said that they would pull it if we, if we uh, have a loan. Maybe I should talk to those people. Maybe that's, maybe that's exactly what should happen. <laughs> so that's something we have to negotiate. Well, one other aspect is that we, you know, fundraise. Uh, certain set of criteria, <clears throat> you know, so uh, I think we'd all feel a little funny if we sort of, you know, move the goalposts as we go along, so that's, yeah. you know, so, so yeah, the, the, the that's one aspect. The model is pure equity. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we presented to people. Yeah, yeah I think my, my wife asked me a similar question, the same tone of voice as you. And she's smart enough. I think the answer I think, is a really, I think it's a really simple, good question. And the answer is complex because you know we, we have to go back to all this paperwork about what we what was our model we presented to the initial investors. And yeah. it might well be exactly what these guys are saying. Like that's that's a really good question and we hope to not have to Right. Go there, right. but if we do, we'll have to figure out yeah, the next This might be better right. than failing. Yeah. It does yes. sound better than failure. Yes. <laughs> well, there's also the point, I mean, not to throw money in the waters of all, but if you get to the point and then the bridge loan does happen, and then they see, oh my goodness, it is going forward. Maybe those who, maybe there would be more encouragement to invest. Mm -hmm. If it's actually made the transition, it is going forward. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what we would do. Maybe best that we get all the money we need, but uh, to see it actually transition into something would bring a lot of enthusiasm and maybe more fundraising. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'd all be owners. Mm -hmm. We'd be on the hook, too, mm -hmm. instead of sort of sitting back and letting just the board be on the hook. I think, though, in, in fundraising, there's another side of it, too, is that 
we, you know, it's hard to fundraise once you've once you've taken off the the um, the pressure. You know, it's sort of like the VPR yeah, fundraising. Yeah. Where, you know, like, <laughs> we don't get it by you know ten o'clock tonight. You know, we'll be you know hell to pay. You know, in some ways that's it's better to do it now than and try it all out to to just finish it yeah. rather than than have a have an easy way out and then and then. And you know when this store gets bought, and I believe it will, um, this group has a big job to take over, and they'll have a lot of work to do just transitioning. You know, Artie is a musician. Every single musician at the Whammy Bar loves him, and and Artie's leaving. Um, they they're, they're going to have to figure out how to. Re reconnect all those connections and make the whammy bar work, you know, and make the store work. And you know, Artie and Nancy have been doing this for a long time. I've run businesses before. That's going to be everything. It's going to take all your effort to just keep this business going and growing and and implementing new ideas. You're going to make mistakes. There's no way not to. Um, to have to be fundraising at that time will be will be a will create added risk for the transition, um, which is risky enough, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, I think this team knows what they're doing and will win doing it. You know, but but I would rather them have undivided focus rather than having to raise another hundred thousand dollars or something. Didn't you hire already? Did you hire Artie to stay on? We didn't. Hi so what, that that is something that I wanted to say. We do plan to, um, in my vision of the store anyway, we have um, a whammy bar committee, which Artie is a part of. Mm -hmm. That committee is. Um, and there's there's tons of amazing musicians in this town that are shareholders, or they don't have to be shareholders, but they can be. But um, in that whammy bar committee, you know, they're they're speaking with musicians, they're getting new music, they're doing all these things. So there isn't one person that has to be doing all of these things. There's groups that are in kind of specializing in different aspects of the store and the whammy bar. And that way we kind of draw on the resources of the whole community. So, I, do, I mean, the transition of even creating that is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to yeah. be a lot. No, I believe you can but do it. it. I'm right. not worried we about that. But I, but I would rather not have yeah. You know, fundraising. It'd be great if we could just make a clean transition and allow this team to focus on on creating, you know, a successful store. Um, I everyone than, would, you know, would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. If you can do it. Yeah. I think we can. I really do. I mean, I think there's been times that I didn't think we could do it, but you know, 150,000 left. Um, we do we still have plans of. You know, once we've kind of tapped out the ability for people to buy shares, we're, we're going to do fundraising projects where it's, you know, 20 bucks to get in and all that money just goes towards our, our um, endeavor. But, and, you, you know, we're not going to raise $100,000 that way. But you can we'll save raise this something. stuff for a bake sale. <laughs> Have you thought about a calendar? I just <laughs> 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 That's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for everybody. We can get Mr. February back. One thing I would toss in as an addendum to tack on to what uh, John was raising is that. Artie and Nancy both really support. They really want this. They came. They came down a lot from what they wanted in their asking price um, because they want this community approach to work, and that that includes you know Artie saying, "I I'm not gonna just gonna hand you my email list and walk off." And he wants the music to succeed mm -hmm. as well as the store, and, and they're both totally on board for this to work, but also to help in the transition, which will be awesome. So I have a question. If we talk to our neighbors, do you have just, rather than a whole book, just a sheet of paper, or who do they contact? Um, they can contact any of us. We have, on that, on that right, book, we have. we have an email address, and we have a website. Okay. So um, we the website's that. fairly new, and Jamie did it, and it's fantastic. She did an awesome job. Okay, we have a brochure. And we have brochures. The brochures don't give a ton of information. 
Um, they give the idea. It gives, yeah, they're it's kind of a little pitch. We, they're downstairs. Okay. But we, we know part of what? Maple Corner Community Store. But people are also welcome to take language, too. I mean, I know it's kind of a lot of heavy information, right, but right. The, the website is really probably the best. There, there is paperwork in the back of the binder that you need. In, my in order to be a share. Yeah, the, I mean, the binder is really for somebody that, that knows that they want to invest right. and be a part of this. Isn't the paperwork for buying a share mm -hmm. on the website? That, can it be printed mm -hmm. out from the I website? don't think it's on the website. It's not currently. You can make a pledge, but you can't do it. Yeah, there's, there you I'm not sure you could put that recently on the website. I think we'd have to run it by some more technical things. But the contact info. Everything that they need for contact info is on the website. And I want to mention that uh, if you talk to people, which I hope everybody will, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, either Jamie and I or Annie and I or somebody will be there to give all this information, go over the booklet, help people fill things out, answer any questions. So we at, 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 at the Randy Bar. It's closed, it's closed yeah, but, we, but we're, we'll, we'll be in there in. meeting. 7 o'clock on Tuesday. 7 o'clock every, every, every Tuesday until we get there. Although I'm going to win in the winter, the, so dinner happens. What is the, <laughs> what is the website? Uh, MapleCornerCommunityStore.org. Pretty, you, pretty can also, also, yeah, you can also you can also get to it maplecorner.com. That's a lot easier. easier. <laughs> maplecorner.com. Jamie got the us the ultimate. Yeah. Web address. <laughs> 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 but please encourage people to come on Tuesday nights because it it's a good way to, to sit down in the space and imagine what it would be like without it being there and getting all the information. And yeah, like one-on-one -on -one questions and answers. Um, I just wanted to say something since I have just recently moved to Calus um, right before the winter time. Uh, and I'm just curious in terms of somebody that is not incredibly financially stable at the moment, um, if there are like other young folks that are trying to invest in the store, if there's any um, younger generations coming in here and trying to not change things. This just happened in the town where I lived and a bunch of people moved in and took over our community store. and. It wasn't a lot I could do about it, or my family could do. So, I'm just curious how that might be playing out here in Calus. It's, it seems like a much different financial situation where the town is able to buy it, and I'm really interested in being a part of it if if I could or in any way I could. So, if there's anything I could ever do to help that may not be financial at the moment, I'd be happy to help. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for people to. Help. To help, there's a, there's advisory committee. There's um, and then I think there's going to be a lot of little committees that are kind of focused in different aspects of running the store and the landing bar, and you know people volunteering their time and um, is is really what we need after we kind of get to the fundraising point that we need to get to, and also spreading the word. Okay, and yeah. shopping. Mm -hmm. Shopping at the right. store and giving us feedback. I mean, I, I think one of the important things about having a store that's community owned is um, that we're really serving the community's needs. You know, so we, we need to hear feedback from people and what they want and, you know, what they can afford. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, for a lot of projects where there's fundraising that you make a pledge and there's a period of time in which to make good on the pledge. My question is, um, does a pledge have to be fully paid in the next 30 days, or what? how, is it, how does that work? I, I wrote a check a month ago, and I don't think it's been cashed, and I, so I, I just wonder about the timing. I think we gave you back your check, right? Not Janet. that I've seen it. Janet, you gave yeah. it back to Janet. That's yeah. different. Oh! Uh -huh. Janet's going on vacation with her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's all clear to me. <laughs> but we, oh, family dynamics. So. Uh, well, well, anyway, just leave that aside. Go back yeah, to my question. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you, you make a pledge, and it has to be done by X date. What's the X date? Um, we're, you'll be hearing from us very soon. <laughs> okay. So we're going to uh, start trying to collect ahead of no November 1st. Mm -hmm. So, or right, you know, towards the end of the month, <coughs> it's going to be like, okay, we're, 
our strategy is really to look at, okay, we're at 300,000 or so now. Let's see how much further we can get over the next two or three weeks. And then, and then look at what the gap is at that point. And, and at that point, we'll be asking for everybody's pledge and additional help and if, to what extent folks can give. Thanks. So, pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I, it's yeah, worth mentioning. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I, one of the things we thought about that a way we could borrow money without it being a, a real mortgage, and we don't know how this would work. But if if we said to people, okay, you bought a thousand dollars worth of shares, if you could pledge a total of five thousand dollars, and then over the next four years, every six months is a five hundred dollar pledge, and and then we could borrow against that with a contract with people. So I mean, because a lot of people say, well, I can only do this now. But a lot of people would think I could do this for the next five years. Hmm. And then if we could find 10 or 12 people to do that and borrow $50,000, it wouldn't, I don't think it would set off the, the people who said they'd withdraw their money if they got a loan, because it would be a kind of a guaranteed loan. Yeah. Well, it depends on people following through on it and everything, but I think that there's a possibility that might work. And I was curious what you would think of that idea. <clears throat> I think that might be a pretty good idea. It might be something we could do when we go back to people and try to right. ask people that's what we're thinking, if yeah. they could do more. And right. yeah, that might, that's another one of those sort of uh, green light ideas that you know at some point you need to think about. Right, absolutely. Well, we, we have that in our back pocket if, you know, once we get to the see what they are in a month. Yeah, I think in a month, if we're not there, we're not going to throw a towel. It's, this is looking at other means and ways to get there and, and um, you know I, I think we're pretty committed Artie and Nancy are pretty committed um, but that said things are going to get more complicated and if we don't do it by the end of the year our our commitment in the binder and to Artie and Nancy is to do this before the end of the year um, so if we don't do that then all you can have your money back if you want it back I want to just mention that, uh, just to give an idea, we've been working on this for a year and a half. And um, just, you know, we've sort of put our money where our mouth is. Um, the board of directors has put up ten dollars or $15,000 from lawyers and appraisals and all that kind of stuff, just out of pocket. And we put in thousands of hours of work, and I think just collectively with just our board and fundraising team, we've all committed to over $50,000. So we're in this, just so everybody sort of knows, that we're not just asking for people to think, for a bunch of money that we're not also doing. Have you guys looked at grants? Is it is are there any community oriented grants that see the value in having a store or is there just nothing? We the, haven't found any. Well the uh, the Vermont Community Fund or Foundation Foundation um, or the corporate model that we went with um, because it was a for profit model was not compatible. With the funds that they had to offer, mm -hmm. that, um, and the model that they suggested for various reasons we didn't think was, was the right fit. Or early on in this whole um, project, you know, we've been talking for over a year. That was a lot about what this was about. It was how do we? What's the best way to do this? Um, and. And we found this this way to do it really was the best fit for our community. We studied a lot of different other stores and and successful ones and and ones that are still on the edge and how they went about trying to survive. Um, and everybody kind of did it their own way to a certain extent. And and we've done it our own way and, and in a way that seems to really make sense for us. Works with this relationship we have with the community center. Um, in, in the community year. If the store building was an historic building, I think yeah. the Preservation Trust of Vermont, for example, mm -hmm. could be involved. Mm -hmm. And I think they are involved in the East Callis store. Mm -hmm. um, but we did go to them, I believe. Yeah, it was yes. because we're not historic. Yeah. It's not a historic building. Yeah. It, it cut a lot, a lot of yeah. the possibility of grants out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, there may be some out there still. I mean, I, we, we've had some folks looking into it. So far. Does the uh, Vermont Country Store have a foundation? Have you talked to them? I don't know. 
They do. That's but a pretty they, good idea. I think they because are, yeah. uh, uh, the Ortons own the store in North Callis, so which the that's the family that started the Vermont Country Store, and um, so I mean they're not terribly involved, obviously, right now, but it might be. I think they're involved with the uh, Memorial Hall. Uh -huh. yeah. But they would probably just have to be, if the family might buy shares, if they have a strong feeling about Callus, but I think it's more North Callus. Yeah. Thanks for your questions and for your ideas and for sharing a bit more about what the store means to you all. If you have more questions, we'll all be around afterwards. And then if you fill out that pledge card, you could either give it to Jamie on your way out or put it on that clipboard that's on the far table. That would be wonderful. Thanks again for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.